Okay. That looked good. Let's see here. Oh. It looks good enough to me. Okay. Alright, this zucchini plant down here has just been growing and growing and growing and growing. But guess what? Not a single zucchini on here. It's been all male plants. It's been too happy. It's got to go. Okay? It's got to go. It's been growing out here since growing season started. As you can see, it's really, really long. It comes from way down here. And, it just, and I even took off leaves and tried to stress it out a little bit. And nothing. Just tons and tons. Not one zucchini on this plant. Look at that. It's just been insane. So, no zucchini, no grow. So you know what that's time for? Time to go. And that's what you do when something's taking up space and not producing the food you want. So now this whole thing is going into the compost, which is basically right behind me. So let me toss that. And I will chop that baby up later. And then I will put that in the um in my other container for doing my super juice, which is the fertilizer part. Alright, now this one has given me a couple of zucchini. But if it starts doing the same thing as the other one, which is what it looks like, this one's a bit smaller too. Oh, and we got attacked and I didn't even know it. Look at that. Oddly enough, it's still alive and it's not even connected. Oh my goodness, let me put this knife away for a minute. Yes, that's a knife. All right. Oh, hold on. Got stuck in there for a moment. Why are you sticking? Oh, it would help if I put it in the right way. There we go. Alright. Now, why is... Okay, this is what happens when you don't pay attention fully to your garden. I'm going to have to probably bring the camera down here so y'all can see. Thank goodness it has these tap roots that went in by itself and we grew itself into the ground because something came in here and we know what it is. I'll mention that in a minute. Alright. Look at that root system. That whole stem. That is what the vine borer worms do. So when they get up inside, they will tear your plants up from the inside out. But this one was wise enough. Now I see why it stopped producing the zucchini. It got extra stressed. Too much stress is bad. So this whole piece right here, this whole chunk, is surviving off one tiny root system. So I can put that back deeper into the ground, which is what I'm going to do. So... We have a grub here somewhere, vine borer, that got inside and destroyed that base. I just pulled that right out of the soil. Alright, let's see. What else do we have over here? Now there's another zucchini growing on this side and so far still have not seen any actual vegetables come out on it. So... That makes me wonder, should I go ahead and chop that one out too? Because I'm going to be planting, uh, putting some garlic in and some black root seeds. These still look good. Now, should I come over here and chop this one out? That sucks. So... Instead of taking up more space, I'm just gonna do this. 
And there goes the other part. Oh, it looks like it was time to pull it out anyway, so it looks like both of them got attacked. That's all right. Problem solved. Get rid of it. Can't believe it did that to me. Yeah, those are all male flowers. They just got too happy, I guess. We fixed that problem. All right. See how that just opened this whole space right back up. So now... I'm gonna have to move this pot too. Now everything else is gonna get a whole lot more attention. And now I can actually get to the other side over there, which is where the uh, those little white butterfly moths been coming through and just laying white eggs everywhere and it rained for a few days. So I didn't get a chance to come out here and they really put a hurting on my Brussels sprouts. Let's see, we've got some nice, beautiful, look at that, that is still trying to grow. We have several different things I gotta be working with out here, but I wanted to show y'all why I wanted to get rid of the zucchini plants, because if they're not producing any females and giving you actual vegetables to eat, then they are all, the only thing they're doing is sucking up the nutrition all the good stuff that's in this soil that we want to use for good purposes and they're wasting it so i ain't got time for wastefulness so we're just gonna get rid of it and that's how we do it we just pull that sucker up and toss it what did i just pull up <laughs> uh-oh i wasn't supposed to pull that one. Oh well, i'll just replant it it's no big deal it's thai basil It'll still be fine. That's the one I wanted. The weed. Yeah, I just want to do a quick live and, and show y'all, you know, learn something new if you didn't know. That if you have vegetable plants that aren't producing and they're just throwing out all these females, it is actually just best to just toss them and get rid of them. Now, I'm glad I did that because that allowed me to come out and see again and check this one. Now I know that this one got disconnected from its main base. Let me grab the camera and I'm going to zoom in here so that y'all can see it. What happened? Okay, let me flip you around for a moment. Oh, shoot. Let me turn it around. Come on. There we go. All right. Let me take y'all down in here. All right. This was the base. Right here was the main base. It was in here. And that vine borer got in and ate this whole section right out. And it separated from it. So this plant saved itself it put in a tap root and it's still alive now this one oh, oh do you see that let me see if i can get it got you those little worms man that's what's coming from those little white butterflies so I have the butterfly net out here too. Let me see them, I'm gonna catch them. They're gonna be in some jewelry in no time. But yeah, thank goodness I checked these when I did. But can you believe it? One root saved the whole plant. And I think, yeah, I've got some more zucchinis coming out on that one. Right here. I don't know how well you can see it, but right there there's a little female flower coming out you can over here that one coming out right there is a female and those females is what gives you the fruit your vegetables yep so this one is still good so i'm going to keep this one she's providing it's providing because 
they are definitely male and female, so I like to jokingly call them my hermaphrodite plants. But if they want to be strictly one gender, like that was, they gotta go. But, let's see here. Let's check around this butternut squash and see what's growing on. Look, that's actually kind of small for a butternut, but it works for me. Look. Okay, I still don't know what these things are. Are these good or bad? Did you see that? These little red critters? What are they? Okay, I'm gonna have to look that up and find out if I need to kill these things. So, uh oh, I see trouble. You wanna see trouble? Check this out. See them? Baby squash beetles. I gotta spray all those. I'll just get my soapy water out and get rid of them. They'll be dead in like a minute or less. All right, let's come back down here. Let's see. This ain't ready yet. I mean, yeah, they're not super sized, but they are nice. There's a wasp. Once these stems get dark and hard, well, they're already really hard, but once they get like a, a brown, then they can be cut off. And these, if placed in the right place, for a winter storage, cool, dark place, they will keep all winter. So that way, if you need some nice, delicious butternut squash in the middle of winter, you'll have it. So on this particular vine, I have three. So looks like that's another male another male not seeing a lot of females up top so i've got three butternut squash with this vine but i also have more growing so and they're going around here's another good example of what those caterpillars do bt spray very very important for this if i could find another way of doing it i would See, I sprayed this yesterday, and look. These little things are still here. See, the struggles are real. We're not the only ones trying to eat this food here. So are they. They need to eat just like we do. But they ain't eating mine, because I'm just going to take off. I need to cut all those leaves off. Respray again, but I'm also going to do some more research to see if I can figure out what is going to be the best spray um, to treat them. Oh, I just found another squash. There it is, another butternut. So, yay, another one. Hopefully, that'll be ready before fall hits. Be a couple days of rain, and I couldn't come out of here, and then things happened, you know. But yeah, look at my Brussels sprouts. Look at all the holes. They're holy. I see more worms, too. Ugh. Yeah, if anybody has any advice on a better way to kill them things, please let me know. Do I have any tomatoes to pick? Yes, I do. Here's my lemon boy. Just put it in the window. Got three in the refrigerator now. But they look nice. Whoa, I'm tangled. Okay, this is why I'm making the garden larger. I need more space. The lemon boys are looking beautiful. Let's get down here and show you something. I don't know if, how well y'all can see it, but I'm probably gonna get tangled again. Um, look at that. 
That thing is big. Look at that thing. Yeah, that's a big one. Uh-oh. That's gonna be nice. It's definitely rounder than the palm of my hand. And this tripod is being annoying. Ouch. Oh, hi, Gina. I really wasn't looking to see who was online because I was kind of trying to stay focused on not tripping and falling in my own garden. <laughs> Let me see who's in here. Oh, Gina. Well, I'm glad you stopped in, but yeah, I'm just, I'm having some issues out here and just, you know, we're all learning. We're still growing. Still trying to figure out what's wrong, what's right. This is my atomic orange corn. And looks like all of them have developed a corn. But it does not appear that they have reached their potential. And I already figured out why. Um, their potential was lost because I did not give them enough nitrogen. Corn needs so much more nitrogen than, you know, all your other basic plants that are out in the garden. So now I know what I did wrong, but it looks like I will get some out of here, so I'm not losing any seed. But I can see that a lot of those did develop at least some kernels. And if that's the case, then I'll probably eat one or two. And then, But one is definitely going into full on. I'll let it ripen and let it harden out. So that way next year I can regrow this exact same ones. But with the more knowledge. And yes, I decided to do my live randomly today because there were some things I needed to show y'all. And it was so rainy on Sunday and I couldn't come out here and just busy, busy, busy. Let's see. I forgot. What did I plant in this pot? Let's see. What do we got here? Well, whatever it is, it's definitely in the melons category. I can tell by the vines, but orange and, orange and red melons. Oh, that's going to be interesting. At least I remembered to label that one. Yeah, definitely going to need a better trellis. And I'm going to put more soil in here because I just didn't have any place to put them at the time. So I just tossed them down in there to see if they would live. And they did. Look at that one. That one's got a double melon on it. You see that? It has two little baby melons right there. Wow. Nice. All right. Now on the other side, which I can't get over from this way, this is, like I said, I totally got to redo this whole garden. All right, you guys, let's go to the other side. Doo -dee -doo -dee -doo. See, this is, that's my, um, oh, shoot. Anyways, the chicken wire that's gonna go up, we're gonna expand this out by several feet, probably in all directions. All of these have to be moved back this way we're going to roll out the garden fabric probably still don't have enough of that oh that's right keep on pollinating my marigolds you sweet little babies but yeah i put some paper shredded paper i really appreciate it but yeah you want to see the sad part is something missing from the corn where's my corn All that sweet corn, nothing. I messed up. So, trials and errors, not failure. Trials and errors, lessons learned. And let's see, just a bunch of random ones that I just kind of tossed around here and there. Sorghum came up. Yes, all of this, all these walkways are getting done and uh, the black um, 
garden paper, uh, plastic, so that all that's taken care of. Now, right here we have my Cherokee tomato, which I grew from seed. And as you can see, they are about my height now, but the lemon boy over there is definitely taller than me because this trellis is big. God, this trellis, I know it has to be like 21 years old. It used to hold up a wild muscadine vine. But, yeah. And this thing is like eight, nine feet tall. So the tomatoes are at least eight. You got four and a half, four ears of corn. Wow. Let me show you something. You know what? I'm going to put this, uh, I'm doing it again. Yes, I am. I am placing a tomato in my pocket. <laughs> there we go again. Becky's going to squish another one. No, I didn't squish the other one. I was just joking. All right. This is what made me happy. You see it? Look at that little baby. These is my sugar babies. My granddaughter Lydia picked these out. And we have, I think I counted, was it? Five, five nice ones. So where's the other one? It's here somewhere. Well, we counted five of them off of this one vine. But then again, there's a ton of them growing right on through here. Yeah, it's, this has been insane. It's definitely been a learning experience. But look at that. My mulberry is looking great. Tell you one thing, it's loving that super stink juice. But I dosed everything yesterday with just, I mean, I literally just put stink juice everywhere. Let's see, I think these are tama tamalios. They seem really small. I mean, is that the, is that the size they're supposed to be? Because if that's true, they don't seem like it's worth it to me. Well, I'm trying new things this year, so. Oh, y'all are going to laugh. Let me give you a good laugh. Mammoth. Get this. Mammoth sunflower. <laughs> I've never seen this happen. Does that look like a mammoth to you? I think they got the packaging wrong. And I see that's a stink bug. No, it's not. I see something there. Oh. Oh, they are coming out of everywhere. Look at them bad things. Yes, I need to spray with some soap. I gotta get my soapy water out. But yeah, it's just I'm disappointed in some stuff. Yeah, no, not mammoth at all. Oh, I see another tomato. That is a nice lemon boy down there. How did I miss that from the other side? It's funny how you got to walk around and see what you missed from different angles. Because those things hide. I don't know how. It's bright yellow as that is. Ouch. Okay, mosquitoes are starting to get me. So I need to get me some spray. Yes, it's off now. Oh my goodness, I forgot my tea towel to wipe my face. So anyways, I got a new plant in and I don't know where it came from because I didn't order it. The Olympian fig. So I don't know who sent it to me but I do appreciate it. That was the, the last one that I had in my list of what I wanted. So it, it was in my Amazon wish list and it got removed from my Amazon wish list after someone purchased it and sent it to me. I know, right? I was like, thank you. So whoever sent me this, thank you so much. This will now be added to my beautiful little lane that I'm creating. 
gonna be beautiful one day. Part of the permaculture thing that I'm trying to do for my area. You know, I need to do something about this tripod leg because it keeps getting on my nerves. Because back here behind me, there is a row of blueberries and figs. And in between the apple trees, there are there's a fig over there too. Right where that leaf is bobbing around. So, so this little beauty, <clears throat> I think what I'm going to do is just pot this one up because it's so small and delicate. I'm going to put this one in a pot and keep it safe so that it can get a good head start, get a bigger root system. It's got a great root system. Let me put that in there so I don't lose it. And let's see. The, uh, it's... It's a hot mess because it's just too hot to go in the greenhouse. Even with the fan running all the time, it's just too hot. So what I'm going to be doing is come back out here after I get off the internet. And I've got some repotting to do, some plants to put in the ground. I'm going to plant the... What did I do with it? Hope y'all can read what that says, but it is, it's called Black Root, the Black Clam. Um, a lot of cold climate. Uh, this I got from, was it Alaska or Canada? But I've, I know they're actually growing because I did an experiment with some seeds to see if they were gonna germinate, and they did because I had to put them in the refrigerator for a while. But yeah, everything is, Everything is coming back, looking good. Um, and the one that I really didn't think had survived, survived. My golden apple tree. It's growing. Ah, uh, the Walmart special. <clears throat> and I do finally have some Meyer lemons coming onto my Meyer lemon tree. Um, my other figs are coming up. My mango's looking good. Got a ton of grapes coming out. Well, they're out. Just, I'm getting ready to start covering them up. All right, let's see if y'all can see the grapes. Let's get y'all in here. Check them out. There's a lot of grapes on this side. Now, like I said before, I don't know what types those are. Oh, thanks. Try not to have a yard anymore. I'm trying to have a forest. I prefer that. It gives me food. Now over here we have the native style. These are muscadines, wild grapes. And this year, uh, it's been out here for two years. We destroyed the other one on purpose because it was uh, in our way and on the dog side and they are not allowed to have any types of grapes. Now here we have a few muscadines coming in. Oh, more than. They don't come in like regular grapes. So, all right, here's some here. I'm seeing you in a while. Hold on. What do we got? Y'all give me one second. Hi. <laughs> I was waiting to do that. <laughs> now you're in blue. All right, let's see who else we got that's going in blue. Let's see. Let's do this. There you go, Duval. Lashes is already a moderator. All right. All right, James, you should be showing up as a moderator now. All right. I'm doing pretty good James I'm actually just been uh, doing some strength training and 
working on some things. You know, got to be ready. So I, I have picked at least six cups worth of these. Oh, we jump it. There we go. And it looks like I need to come out here again today and get some more. Every day I'm coming out. Oop. Every day I'm coming out here and picking these. So far, six full cups. Go away, B. Jeez. Look at them. Oh my gosh. I mean, how much better can you get? I mean, this is just one plant. One. And, I mean, it's still just producing and producing. I mean, it's done flowering. Yeah. All right, so... I'm going to have to sit these somewhere until I'm ready to go in I'm with this tomato. Alright, let's see here. Uh, there's more. Alright, I'll pick the rest of these later. Let me go put these somewhere. Look at that. Just doing a live stream and just come across all those extra ones. Alright, let me put these over here. Because, uh, hold on. All right, you see those? These are the elephant garlics that I need to put in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lay these over here for right now. Okay. This is the new nectarine seedling that I started. But inside there is also, I don't know how well y'all can see them, but there are some uh, seed thorn berries in there, the seeds. So I gotta put this this one goes in a pot. This is uh, the beginning of a black root. And they're supposed to have the taste of like, kind of like a clam. So I'm kind of excited to try that because I love clams. But yeah, I'm going to get these in the ground. And put some more black root in the actual soil instead of, you know, in the test pot. It's like everything's finally coming up a bit. Yeah, I use uh, natural brown paper towels to keep everything in place. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I've got plenty of jams. You ought to see some of the stuff that I've got put away. There's just some things I do not share online. So, but yeah. Oh. <sighs> Yeah, that's just, ugh. Yeah, and these, I'm gonna transplant a couple of these over. These are my little banana peppers because the first ones died and I started over and the sand is what saved them. So we know that's basil, so move that out of the way. The sand is best for starting seeds. That way you don't have to worry about. Or I'll put some soil in a pot if I wanna just if I know it's gonna grow, I will take the sand, put it over top of a, um, the seedlings on top of the soil, okay? The pot, fill it with soil with all your nutrients in it. But then you lay your seeds just beneath the surface of the, uh, <coughs> sorry. You put it just at the surface of the soil and then you cover it in sand. So when that taproot sticks out, it's going to go straight down into the soil. The gnats cannot get to any of your stuff. Because they can't get to the sand. I've been using the swimming pool sand because we used to have a swimming pool back here. And everything, you know, since I turned it into a garden, I was like, well, why not just use the sand for the garden? But came to the realization I'm never going to get bananas out of this particular one because I mean it, it come it came back during the spring so I mean it's by some miracle 
air weather is good all winter. 7A, 7B. But we'll see. What was it? Uh, Bobby from Lax Tropical Homestead said that you gotta get about, was it 20 to 30 leaves before it'll grow a flower? So, we'll see. Uh, did anyone else come in? Uh, my Renaissance Grandma, hey. Thank you for coming in. I've been just sitting here just blabbing away. The, uh, so who was it said they like my yard? You want it? <laughs> I'm just trying to get rid of all the grass and the weeds and I just don't want it anymore. So that's why I'm aiming for my little permaculture scenario. See how I've got these spaced out? So, husband can get through with the mower, but as these get bigger, it's gonna start taking in all this space. Eventually, all this is gonna go together, all of it. So it's gonna be like one massive fruit growing frenzy. That's the plan anyways. All right, I've definitely been on here longer than I thought I was gonna be. But, but yeah, lots of little melons growing, varieties, I can't even remember how many varieties of different types of melons that I put out here, but it's, it's quite a bit. Oh, and we did get around to getting a lot of that fence put up, but we changed it. We went with chain link. I'm going to take y'all on this side and I'm going to show you. Because this is just the beginning of what it's going to look like. Remember how I said to me it just looked trashy? It was trashy. Move puppers. Move puppers. All right. All right, I'm going to flip this around so y'all can see here. Come on, flip. All right, we put up chain link. And yes, I will be designing with bamboo. All that trashy mess, now that we've got it up, I can clean all that other mess out of there from the back. As you can see, there's some old chicken wire. Look at that. All that back there is just, we're just gonna tear all that down now. We couldn't tear it down until these <laughs> could stay in the house so and they wouldn't stay in the house we didn't feel like locking them up so we went ahead and put this on this side and now we can tear off the other side so this is a uh, we haven't poured the concrete from uh, right here at the edge of this board straight back this way so we still need to do more concrete this section all through here the bottom of this fence is inside of the concrete so we trenched it, we added Starlet. Did you have anything to do with that? I guess not. All right, flip you back around now. So yeah, this is a, see it behind me, peach tree and it's a purple plum tree. Grew together. It's a double my tree. As you can see, look how tall it is. It's huge. And then we've got, that is a wild plum. It's called a deer plum. It's right in that corner. But yeah, this is the side that we hang out on. This is the doggy's yard. They keep it very well fertilized, so I have to run around with the pooper scooper all the time in my crepe myrtle for shade. And I grow gourds so that I can do birdhouses. Eventually this whole tree will be covered in birdhouse gourds. And let's see, here we have, this is a type of a cherry but it's a wild cherry. I did not plant it, 
the birds put it here with their poop. And it's growing inside of one of my hedges. And that one. Which I come out here, me and my husband will take turns cutting it down. Every fall we come out, we trim this thing down to the bottom. But I'm going to have to cut down that, that faux cherry. Because some of these are causing issues with some of my other trees. And this whole entire plum tree and peach tree sections are literally getting cut down to about, I don't know, 12 feet until they're only like 12 feet tall. And then I'll trim out the other expanding branches. And I got to control the squirrels. They're out of control. But yeah. Okay. I think that's all I have to say for today. Hope you all enjoy. Hope you learned something, especially about zucchini. And I am definitely going to squish this tomato in my pocket. Still in one piece, y'all. I didn't squish it yet. All right. I'm glad y'all came in and showing your support. Don't forget to thumbs up. Well, a lot of people forget to do the notification bell. Hit it. Hit all notifications. And if you're not subscribed, please do so. And I really appreciate y'all. Um, let's support each other. Learn from each other. And treat each other with utmost respect. Whether it's in your day-to-day -day life. Or right here on the YouTube streets. I will talk to y'all later. Mwah! Everybody. Y'all have a beautiful week. And I will see y'all on Sunday on my next live stream. Take care. Thanks for coming.